So today we're going to talk about open and close sets. These sets will give us a way to talk about various properties of metric spaces and define concepts such as convergence of sequences and continuity of functions rigorously. So unfortunately this video is going to be pretty definition heavy but we'll be able to make our way through it. Um, so the first thing that we're going to define is the concept of an open ball. And we're going to say that an open ball about p of some point p in a metric space of radius r is going to be this set b of p r containing all the points q such that the distance between p and q is less than r. So if we were to look at r2, for example, if we were to take our point p to be the point zero, 0, then if we took all points less than 1, then our open ball is this right here. <clears throat> now, although in R2, our open balls look like little circles, uh, they could, in general, look like anything. We could take our open balls to be diamond shaped like this. Or they could be squares. And then in a general metric space they don't have any shape prescribed to them because they don't have to be uh, geometric in nature. But it's just a set containing all the points such that the distance between P and the other points is less than R. And <clears throat> open balls are going to be able to give us a way to define limit points. And limit points are going to be how we can describe being able to get infinitesimally close to something. So in a metric space, we say that a point P uh, is a limit point of a set E if every every open ball of P contains some other point. So if we wanted to take our example from R2 and then we looked at the point 0, 0 and we took our set E to be the whole plane then any open ball that we form is going to contain another point. Now I said that this is going to be able to characterize being able to get arbitrarily close to something, but how does this definition achieve that? Well it achieves that by the very key word right here, every open ball. Not just particular values, another point, but we can get arbitrarily close. We can take R to be point 1, point zero 01, point zero zero 001, and so on. And for any value of the radius that we choose, that open ball is going to contain some other point. And so that's going to allow us to define being able to get arbitrarily close to something. And <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to introduce is the idea of a closed set. A closed set is going to be a set that contains all of its limit points. So in other words, everywhere where you can get arbitrarily close, those points are going to be in that set. And <clears throat> just for an example, uh, we could take a half open and half closed interval in R1 and to look at the different limit points well on the right side here this point that is contained in this interval is going to be a limit point because no matter what radius we choose we're going to get some points inside here so this right here is a limit point and it's in the set. 
But on our left endpoint right here, it's not in the set, but we can get arbitrarily close to this point. And so it's going to be a limit point of this set, even though um, <clears throat> the limit point is not itself in the set. So this set would not be closed. However, if we have a closed interval like this, in this set, which also includes these points on the inside, because if I draw any open ball on any of these inside points, they're then this is going to be a closed set, <clears throat> which this terminology also mimics the closed interval. And so the next thing that we're going to define is the concept of an interior point. So we say that a point P is going to be an interior point of some set E if <clears throat> there exists some open ball B of P such that B is a subset of E. So an open interval in R1, then we can see that this point right here would be an interior point because we can find some open ball and all the points in this set are a subset of this larger set. So that this is going to be an interior point. And the important thing is that we just need to find some open ball. Um, so these points on the outside, we can still find an open ball. They may get progressively smaller and smaller, but no matter how close we get to this, these two endpoints right here, we can always make our radius of that ball smaller and smaller, and those open balls are going to be subsets of this open interval, and therefore <clears throat> all of these points would be interior points. And so that leads us to defining an open set. Uh, we say that some set E is going to be open, if every point of E is an interior point. Now, the terminology here is admittedly a little bit confusing because you may think if E is closed, then it can't be open. Or if it's open, then certainly it can't be closed. Uh, but these two definitions characterize something that's completely different. Uh, being closed has to deal with containing your limit points, and being open has to deal with every point being an interior point. So they don't characterize um, mutually exclusive things. And as an example of that, if we were to take the empty set then ask ourselves, is it open? Well, it being open means that every point of E is an interior point of E. But if it were not open, that means there would exist some point of E that is not an interior point. But this is, by definition, empty. So the empty set is actually open. And then, <clears throat> also, if we ask ourselves, is the empty set closed? Well, if it weren't closed, then it would not contain all of its limit points. So, there would have to be some limit point that was not in the set. But it doesn't have any limit points because the set's empty to begin with. So the empty set is also closed as well. And some of the, 
these sets that are open and closed are sometimes called clopen. Um, but yeah, the main point is that um, these terms, open and closed, are not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> and however, we are going to be able to use these concepts to define really important things like convergence of sequences and continuity of functions. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if you did. See you in the next video.